Hey everyone, this is Kenji. I'm at home again. Um, today we're making oyakodon, which is um, a Japanese home-cooked dish. Actually, you get it in restaurants too. Um, it means parent and child uh, rice bowl. And in this case, parent and her child, re child refers to chicken and egg. So here I've got some chicken thigh. You can also do this with chicken breast. I'm making enough for essentially one serving right now, which is a pretty common way to make this dish, although um, you can make as many servings as you want um, all at once. Well, as, lar as, lar as long as you have a large enough pan, I could do up to, say, four servings at once or so. One chicken thigh per person, um, per serving. Trim off a little bit of the excess fat, um, and then you want to slice it. Um, what I do is I kind of split this piece here, split the little side off, slice it at a kind of an angle. You can also just dice it if you want, but slicing it works a little bit faster. And what's great about this is actually is that it's super, super fast. Um, it takes about five minutes or maybe 10 minutes start to finish. Um, so, but you know, if you start a bowl of, if you start a pot of rice cooking, um, by the time the rice is done, you're done with uh, the chicken as well. Um, although in this case, I have actually already pre-cooked the rice, I had some pre-cooked rice that I just reheated and stuck into a bowl. So cut slightly at an angle to get nice, nice sort of flat these flat, even pieces. Um, if you cut it in dice, um, that works too. It just takes a little bit longer for the chicken to cook through. Um, and against the grain. So you can see the chicken, the grain in here runs this way. And you wanna cut perpendicular to that grain so that your, um, your pieces come out more tender because you're shortening sort of the length of each of those muscle fibers. All right, we got our chicken. Um, I got my separate chicken board here. I'm gonna go wash my no, I'm not gonna wash my hands yet. First, I'm gonna put the chicken right in here. This is a um, oyakodon pan. It's specifically made for this. Um, you don't need to use this pan. You can use like a small skillet. Um, if you're making this for two people, like an eight inch skillet is about right. If you're making it for four, go for with a 10 inch skillet. I use this small one for single serving. Wash my hands. Oh, this little pot, pot here is called a sahan. I made, um, it's a Turkish uh, tin, copper and tin pot. Um, I made, uh, this morning I made some menemen, um, which maybe I'll do a video for at some point. It's one of my favorite breakfasts ever. It's like sort of the, the Turkish version of shakshuka. Maybe shakshuka is the uh, Middle Eastern version of menemen. Anyhow, they're both delicious things. Oh, and here's some Turkish bread I made that went with it. No need bread. I can show you how to do that too. I should have shown, I should have just taken a video then, huh? All right. So I got these um, Tokyo Negi, which are just a specific kind of scallion. They're sort of, sort of somewhere between a scallion and a leek. Um, I'm just using these because I have them. You could also use regular old onion in this dish. Um, actually, you know what? Maybe I'll save this for the garnish and I'll use regular old onion for the, uh, for the actual simmering step. Get your onion. Peel it. That's probably enough right there. Um, okay, so that's all going in this pot. Pan, I should say. Um, and then what we're gonna make is some sauce. So the sauce is a uh, very classic Japanese flavors. Um, dashi, which is a, a bonito and kombu stock, a bonito and um, sea kelp stock. But I'm gonna use this uh, powdered dashi, which is I would say what I use like 90% of the time, unless I'm doing something where it's really important to have excellent dashi. The powdered stuff works great for, well, great for any kind of simmered dish like this. If I was making something like miso soup, which is like really dashi based, then I would probably make my own dashi from scratch. About a teaspoon there. A little teaspoon. Um, what do I need? Some soy sauce. This is usukuchi soy sauce, um, light soy sauce, which is a little bit saltier and sort of sharper in flavor than shoyu or dark soy sauce, um, but you can use either. A couple of teaspoons of that. Need a little sake. You don't need the fancy stuff here. I, I, I got these big bottles for cooking with either shochikubai or ozeki. You just need a sort of dry sake. These ones are fine for cooking with. I wouldn't really drink these ones. I mean, they're not too bad for drinking either. But a couple tablespoons of that. That's gonna go right in here. Oops, I should have dissolved that first, but it doesn't really matter. It's all gonna, it'll all dissolve as it cooks anyway. Grab 
grab a little sugar too. All right, now this is gonna go on a burner and it's gonna simmer. I overfilled it a little bit. So you couldn't, you can um, take that dashi, uh, the the hondashi, the powder that is, um, and combine it with water first, which is uh, how you would normally make it. But I actually like my oyakodon with a little bit of an extra sake kick to it. Um, so I just added a little bit more sake than you normally would in a recipe like this. If you have mirin, which is um, a sort of sweet Japanese rice wine, you can also um, add some of that here, but by no means necessary. All right, we'll let that come to a simmer. With a little lid on it. This lid has a little hole to allow for steam to escape. Okay. Shabu, look out. All right, we got these ingredients. Uh, let me put this onion. Save that guy for later. Oh, I'm gonna make myself some kalpis. So kalpis is this um, Japanese yogurt drink. It's the most popular drink and most popular soft drink in Japan. Um, I grew up drinking this stuff. Um, when I was a kid, it was called kalpis, C-A-L-P-I-S. Um, in Japanese, you would call it karupisu. But um, they eventually realized, so my dad used to call it kalpis. And so I think the company that makes it eventually realized that sales were kind of hindered in the US because it sounded too much like kalpis. So they changed it to kalpiko. At least that's the story I heard, but it's kind of a yogurty, yogurty drink. It comes in a concentrate. Also good with soda water. Makes good cocktails too. All right, we got the chicken part. Now we're gonna do the egg part. Egg in a bowl. You know what? I'm gonna, we're gonna do an extra yolk later. I'm gonna do just a tiny splash of soy sauce in here. So you could just season it with salt, but I like to season it with a little bit of soy sauce and actually I use a little bit of the dashi powder too. Beat it, doesn't have to be very thoroughly beaten. Just a very light beating. Now let's put, Let's mix in some of the uh, scallions there too. Sorry, the Tokyo Negi. All right, we got our parent simmering over here. And we got our child in the bowl over there. And you can see this chicken is like, it's like basically halfway done already. Still a few little raw bits going. But it's, it's almost done. It'll just take another minute or two. Very quick, very healthy dish. There's, uh, you know, no added fat. You can do it with chicken breast if you want. Uh, if you want to go low fat. I know people are going to argue about whether fat is bad for you or not. I don't really care. Um, it's very easy. It's very delicious. Um, it has those sort of really classic Japanese flavors of dashi, soy sauce, sake and sugar um, so sweet and savory that's a you know so many Japanese dishes are based on that those combinations of ingredients um, say I don't know dipping noodles like somen uh, dipping noodles will be made with a with a broth that's very similar um, tempura tempura dipping sauce is very similar um, dishes like gyudon which is sliced beef with onions um, very similar dish to this gyudon sliced beef with onions um, simmered in a similar sauce um, just ton, tons of Japanese food that uh, uses those flavors what's also really good is um, pumpkin that's simmered with uh, dashi and mirin and sake and soy sauce. In fact, almost anything that you can that you can find that's simmerable, if you simmer it in dashi, mirin, sake, and soy sauce, it's going to be delicious. Uh, Ajitsuke tamago, the, um, the eggs that you get with your ramen bowl, um, those are marinated in a mixture of sake, soy sauce, dashi, and sugar. Sukiyaki is soy sauce, dashi, sake, sugar. Shabu shabu, you would probably dip it into soy sauce, sake, dashi, sugar. 
or sesame-based sauce. All right, about 30 more seconds and that chicken is cooked. Let me actually taste it. Um, incidentally, if, you're, if your broth is simmering like this, um, you can dip your, and, and your chicken is cooked on the outside, you can dip your spoon in here and taste it for seasoning. You don't have to worry about um, uh, like salmonella or bacteria in case like, cases like this. Um, if it's simmering, it's a good indication that, you know, it's at, at least like 185 to 190 degrees. And at that temperature, um, salmonella, so at 165 degrees, salmonella goes through a seven log reduction. That's, um, so for every 100,000 uh, bacterium, bacteria that are uh, in your food, at 165 degrees, um, for every 100,000 bacteria that are in your food, only one will remain after uh, less than two seconds at that temperature. So at 185 degrees, um, it's even faster and even more of the bacteria are killed. Um, it won't kill bacterial spores, but you don't have to worry about those right now because we're not gonna let them, we're not gonna let them multiply later on. So you can taste anything that's simmering like this, you can taste it without real, any kind of real risk to your health. All right, meanwhile, I got my rice in my bowl. Um, this rice I had cooked from before. Um, I just reheated it in the microwave, which is the best way I know to uh, reheat rice um, covered in the microwave. Uh, rice also, you can freeze it actually, put it in a bag, push out all the air, freeze it, um, and then you can thaw it, uh, thaw it directly in the microwave um, and it comes out really good. So I usually make extra rice whenever I'm boiling a pot of rice. Okay. This is done. So we got our egg here. And we're just going to Give it one more quick little stir. And I'll pour it right over the top. Now you can let this cook as much or as little as you want, um, but typically you have the egg pretty runny. So I'm gonna cover that, let it cook for just about mm, 15, 30 seconds. Um, and in the meantime, uh, I've got raw chicken on it. In the meantime, I'm going to separate out an egg yolk, extra yolk. Making a mess here, bad planning. Let's keep that guy there for now. And this is done. All right, now I just, so you can see that egg is still a little bit runny, which is what we want. together there. And then I'm going to make a tiny little well here. I'm going to plop in this extra yolk who's already broken, but that's all right. It's all going to taste the same. I'm not too squeamish about um, raw eggs, by the way. I know some people are. So if you are, don't, you know, you can cook your eggs a little harder. You don't have to put the extra yolk in there. Um, I like it this way. And eggs these days are pretty remarkably safe. Um, this is a little shichimi togarashi, which is um, a Japanese seven spice blend. So it's got, um, I don't know what all the spices are. A couple types of chilies, uh, black sesame, orange peel. Um, I think it's got coriander seeds in there too. Um, anyhow, this is the dish. It's um, oyakodon, parent and child rice bowl. It's uh, chicken an egg simmered with dashi, soy sauce, mirin, and sugar all over rice um, with some onions in there too. Mm. What's really nice is the, um, the rice underneath kind of absorbs, you know, it's not like super wet, it's not like soupy, but there's a little bit of liquid left in there that's just sort of barely bound by that egg. Um, and so the rice kind of just starts to absorb that. So you can still pick it up with chopsticks, but it gets a ton of flavor in there. Let's get a extra yolk in there. All right, Shabu, you've been patient. Sit. Good girl. All right, see you later. See you tomorrow.